Mark Ray Mundy for ESPN with you today with Shane Burgos, who is headed into his second PFL fight June 23rd in Atlanta against Yamato Nishikawa. Shane, I, I wanted to I want to ask you about the first fight, but let, let's let's look forward uh, for a second here. Uh, you know, this is your second fight. You're 0 and 1 right now in PFL. Yamato Nishikawa, I, I, I watched I watched this fight against Clay Collard. Very tough dude. What what are you looking forward to? Uh, you know, going to the second fight with PFL. Oh, I'm looking forward to an actual fucking fight, like a like like a real Shane Burgos fight. That's what I'm looking forward to because I know this guy's coming in the same position I am. He's in a position where his back's against the wall, my back's against the wall. With to either win or go home, and uh, we're both looking for the kill. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited that he's coming in there to take me out because that's exactly what I'm coming to do. And I feel like fights like that. That's that's what everybody knows me for. Like like those crazy wild fights, and this is this has to be. He has to go in there and he has to try to take me out or or he's getting get some sent home packing. I mean, we, we don't want to just go out there and get a three point decision. We got to get uh, the six or the five at least. So, yeah, we're both be looking for the finish. And I, I think like this would be a vintage Shane Burgos performance, but for the finish. Did you see his fight against Clay Collard? Did you watch it? Yeah, so I was warming up backstage while he was fighting. So I was watching here and there, but then I went back and watched it again, obviously. Durable dude, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. hundred percent. I'm not taking him lightly at all. Like, it's one of those things like a lot of people are like, oh my God, you're going to steamroll this guy. I'm like, I'm going to steamroll know his name. Like, is that, is that the reason why you think that? I'm, yeah, I know I'm going to steamroll him. Like, I, that's what I, I believe that. But why do you think that? Just because you don't know his name. Like, I, I believe in my skill set. But just because you guys don't know who this guy is doesn't mean he's, he's a, a walk in the park or anything like that. He's super tough. He's young. He's got a bunch of fights. He actually has more fights than me. I, I have more uh, high profile experience, but right. his experience counts for something. And the guy is tough. So. I'm not taking them lightly whatsoever. And, and the fights that are like this where I'm supposed to win, there's more pressure on me. And I mean, I'm, there's a lot of pressure on me going into this one. Uh, this is the one that I'm supposed to win, right? And this is one where where if I don't win, then – or if I if I win and it's just like a lackluster performance, then then, then I get nothing out of it. You know what I mean? So I all the pressure in the world is on me. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that this is not a position that you wanted to be in, you know, the 0-1 and, and you're in this position where, uh, you know, this is what makes PFL so unique, right? It's like – these fights really have a lot of stakes because it is, it is, you know, win or, or go home. And it may be in this case, like you said, not even just win, but you need to win in spectacular fashion, get a finish. I mean, is that, that, that has to be some pressure. A hundred percent. Like I a hundred percent. It's, it's more added pressure, but I really, I, I love, I love pressure. I really feel like, pre like it's corny cliche line, but pressure makes diamonds. And I, the, the more pressure, the brighter the lights, please doubt me, doubt me, please doubt me. I, I love that position. I love that role. So yeah, I, I don't really, more pressure the better i'm not putting too much stock once referee says go it's all out the window do, do you feel any is there any added burden because you know you were promoted and you and you kind of are you know you were the hottest free agent you know you came into pfl you know you were the guy that you know you talked about it they they paid you a good amount of money um and uh you were you were you know set up to be a star and you lose the first fight is the, is that is that weighing on you a little bit Yes and no. Like I, at, at first it was, but I remember I went backstage to do the post fight press conference, and I, you never really ever do it after after a loss. But they asked me to do it, and I was like, you know, what? it's fine, I'll, I'll do it, and I did it, and I was able to kind of snap back into reality where I was like, I was pissed, I was I was bummed, I feel like I let I let them down. But then on the other hand, it was like, you know what, get over it because you have ten weeks to go and make it right. I mean, it, that's the one thing I like about the the not one thing. That's one of the things I like about the season format is that once what what win, win lose or draw, no matter how you how you did in that performance. Let's say you had a bad performance and you won or you, or you lost, whatever. You're getting a quick turnaround and you know exactly when it is. Like we already all knew that we were fighting June 23rd in Atlanta. We didn't know who we were fighting. But we knew we had an, our next date already booked. So for me, to, I got backstage and one of the, one of the uh, reporters asked me that and I was like, that's right. That's a good point. And I need to dust myself off and be like, let this go because me sitting here crying about it isn't going to do anything. Just focus on the next one. And, and that's that was uh, relieving just to be able to be like, you know what, let it go. On to the next one. The next one's insight. I already have it booked. Just focus on that one. I've I've heard you say in interviews that it wasn't even so much losing that fight against uh Olivier Aubin Mercier. It was the fact that it wasn't an exciting fight. And that's kind of your brand, right? Your brand is to have, you know, these exciting knockdown drag out fights. And that was not that. So what is worse? Is it the loss or is it or is it not having, you know, the best fight? No, it's definitely the loss. I hate losing at anything, man. It, it, if you lose and it's a, it's a competitive fight, it, it still bothers me. I, the, the three losses I had before that were awesome competitive fights, but they still eat at me. So the loss at anything pisses me off. But that felt more like a bad spar than it did a bad fight because he did a really good job of just like 
winning rounds. Like he's good at, at, at doing that, just like kind of nullifying and dragging out and, and sucking the time. So, yeah. What went wrong in that, in that fight? Would you say, I mean, cause he's, he's uh you know, he's a guy who's, he's a veteran like you, he's been in the UFC, yeah. he's fought high level of competition, you know, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, you guys knew that uh, going in. What do you think was, was the, was the, you know, the issue? He just did a good job at, at making it, more of a competition and less of a fight. Like I never felt like I was in, in a danger in a position to like, even when he had my back, I didn't feel like he was trying to choke me or trying to punch me or anything like that, but he just did a good job of just being able to hold on to me. He had a strong grip, uh, had a tough time breaking that. I didn't want to get too reckless with that. Now hindsight's 2020. I feel like I should have just got reckless at that, at, at that point. But um, I, I did it a little bit too late in the third round when, when, his, when he finally fell off and I just started going crazy, but I just didn't have enough time at that point. So uh like I said, hindsight's twenty twenty. Maybe I should have got a little more reckless in those those stalemate positions. Another unique thing about PFL is that there's a chance, and maybe even a pretty good chance, that you'll run into him again later this year in the playoffs, or maybe even in the, in the finals if you make it. If you guys both make it, is that something that you're hoping for? Like you want you want to see uh, OAM back across the cage from you? Yeah, of course, in five rounds, I think that would be a, a different fight for sure. I think I think it'd be uh, I think it'd be a way more exciting fight too, and I think him going into a finals he 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 would be more inclined to try to finish too like he did with his his last final fight with uh stevie ray so uh, i think it would be a completely different fight in a lot of different ways so yeah i would love that and i, I do like that about like you said like the the the, the end is in sight with the million dollars and then the, the championship but also a rematch is in sight too so i, I do like that a lot but the fact the fact that you know you're fighting a guy of the caliber of an olivia Auburn Marseille in your first fight in pfl does that kind of show like you know, this is this is a pretty strong roster. You know, the the best fighters not always. I mean, obviously the UFC has a lot of great fighters, but there are good fighters yeah. everywhere, including PFL. Absolutely, if you look at the, the especially the fifty five and forty five division in PFL, they're they're that these guys can some some of them have been in the UFC and they had, maybe they got cut, but like even OAM, like if you look at his his losses, like his losses are all legit guys. He has no no losses to to any bums or anything like that. So like you can justify him not getting cut. And you got guys like uh, Bubba, Jenkins, Bubba Jenkins and um, mm -hmm. Brendan Lockman at 45 who could easily compete in the UFC now. now. Uh, the 55 division is Natan Schultz and then Rosh Mafio, like Clay Collar. Like, yeah, they, there's so many good guys. Stevie Ray, they got guys that have been in the UFC, guys that maybe got cut. But just because you got cut doesn't mean you're not good enough to be in the UFC. And those, all, all the guys that got cut from the UFC have wins in the UFC too. So, yeah, yeah. I think this, the, the roster is stacked and only getting more stacked. And and since you know since the first half of the season, the PFL continues to be aggressive in going after you know top free agents. Francis Ngannou is now you know in the mix. Uh, that's a, a huge deal for PFL. Is that encouraging? You know, for for someone like you who you know you took a chance, you signed as a free agent with PFL, and and they're continuing to add you know top top tier talent. Yeah, one hundred percent. So like right after I signed, um, Thiago Santos I signed, uh, Aspen Lad signed, and they had uh, Ced Cedric. Don't, I can't Dune remember Bay. his last yeah. name. Huge he's, signing. He's a stud. He's a stud. Jake Paul, Paul signed, which is like, say what you want about Jake Paul, but that's eyeballs. That's eyes. That's attention. That I love that. That's eyeballs on, on, on the organization. So that, that's another one. You got Francis signing, which is the biggest free agent signing in the history of the sport, in my opinion. I think I was up until then at that point. But th there's no question. The deal he got is awesome. It's phenomenal. It's an amazing deal for the entire sport, not just for Francis. That's what I love about it. But, uh, the fact that they're doing all this, it shows that they're not just they're not just trying to be another uh, another promotion. They're trying to be the top tier promotion. Uh, right now, obviously, it's the UFC. They have the biggest brand. They have the biggest uh, platform. But the the PFL is, is hot on their heels, and they're and they're coming. They're sh they're showing that they're they're here to not just be part, but to compete with them. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't catch the UFC in, in one year, right. Or even in two years, right. It needs to be like a, a steady climb. And I yes. feel like that's kind of what PFL yeah. is doing every year, little by little, you know, they're adding more talent, they're adding more depth to the roster. Um, that's exactly. gotta be something that, 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 you, you know, you like that's, you know, cause you, you know, they invested in you and you're also investing in them as far as your career. So that's why I feel like I, I, I put my, 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 my trust in my stock in them. I, if, if they, if they look bad, then I look bad. If they look good, then I look good. That's kind of how, how, how I feel. So, and they're looking great right now. And like that, that signing with Francis is awesome for this for the entire sport. You mentioned uh, Jake Paul, and I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, you know, have, having him on board, even as like an investor, you know, as an equity partner or whatever, whatever the title is, 
obviously great for eyeballs, like you said. Do you do you think he fights? I mean, do you think he actually gets into the cage and fights? I, I do, I do. I, I really do, but I don't think he's that kind of guy that'll try to just uh be I, let me let me so I think he'll fight, but do I think he's gonna fight uh somebody like Cedric after that? No, I think he's gonna fight somebody that's O and O. I think he's gonna he's not a stupid kid. He's gonna fight somebody with maybe a little bit of experience, but not a crazy amount of experience. And that and that's what he should do. He shouldn't fight somebody that's got a huge name. Like I wouldn't fight Nate Diaz in MMA right off the bat for your first fight. Um if he did that, I would be very impressed when there's a draw just for the fact that he's getting in there with somebody like that. But I don't think he would do that for his first fight. I do think he'll fight for sure, but I don't think he's gonna fight a world beater or a world a world name right now. Or a yeah. world renowned name. Yeah, I mean he's 0-0 in MMA, right? He has no uh you know, no yeah. MMA experience. Yeah. Who, who do you think wins that fight, by the way? The boxing match, Jake Paul or, or Nate Diaz? Um, how many rounds is that? Eight. Eight rounds. Eighty five pounds. Damn. Eight eight rounds. If it was longer, I, I would I would be more confident in Nate. Uh, it's getting a little bit older now. Jake is definitely faster. Um, one punch knockout power goes to Jake, but the cardio definitely goes to to Nate, and the volume goes to Nate. So he's been in there with world class fighters. I mean, at this point, Jake's been in there with some good fighters too. So it, it's it's a close fight, but I'm I'm still leaning towards Nate. I'm gonna go like sixty forty Nate. Fair enough. Uh, last thing, Shane, and thanks for the time again. Uh, I got to ask you about, you know, this this recent string of drug test failures in PFL. I think it's uh, it's nine, you know, nine from from the first half of the season, which is kind of an alarming number. I mean, what is your what is your thoughts on that? I don't know. Like they, they, they're they're saying, like I just saw, they're calling it banned substances. So I don't know. Like usually when you when you hear that, everybody automatic, oh, steroids. But it could be diuretics too. Like there's a million things that are considered banned substances. So I wish before they said that they would specify what it is exactly, so we could know. Um, because I don't know that 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 is very peculiar. I, I I know there's no USADA, so it's a lot easier to get away with. But uh, I I would love to know what specifically these guys are, are testing positive for. So, yeah, I think it was like a mix of you know PEDs and diuretics and you know other stuff. But uh, yeah, it's uh. It's kind of it, crazy. It, it, I mean, it, it, you're and your division, you're you're actually not your division, but your former division was affected by that too. They lost two fighters at 145. Oh, I didn't even know that. What who, who was that 45? Uh Flores and uh I don't have the names in front of me right now. Oh. Uh but yeah, but I mean it's uh it's kind of crazy, right? I didn't uh, that that was that was a weird one. That is I, I it was shocking like that that they were coming out back to back to back like that. I was like you guys are, you guys don't know that you're going to get drug tested. Like you got, you kind of, you do know that the, it, it, we're, we're not, not getting drug tested just because it's not UFC. Like, yeah, UFC has USADA, which is awesome because you can't cheat when, with USADA. I mean, there, there's ways that, that guys get around with cheating no matter what. So there definitely is ways guys get away. I, I feel like, I feel like there's ways people get around with cheating with, even with USADA, but it's by far the hardest. So with, with the PFL, it's like, we, we get tested still, but you guys know when you're getting tested and you're still failing. So that, that's like, what the, fuck? it's crazy. Like, is it worth it? Is it worth it? I don't know. You tell me now you can't fight for X amount of months. Maybe I don't, I don't even know what the, what the suspension time limit is for, for those kind of, kind of pops. Do you know what it is? It could, I mean, it's a, uh, they're all, they're all probably going to be different possibly depending on what they test the positive for. But usually Nevada gives you like at least, you know, nine months, which again, in PFL it's, it's unique because, if you're out nine months, that's it. You know, your season, yeah. your season is over. It isn't like you can just come back and fight, you know, in nine, nine months from now and, you know, things are normal. Cause I mean, in the UFC, sometimes fighters don't fight for nine months. Yeah. Right? So it isn't even that big of a deal, but in PFL, that's it. You know, that that's it. Your, your chance of winning the million is, is, is gone. Yeah. Completely different again from the UFC. Like even with, even with someone like that, it's completely different. All right. Last thing, Shane, uh, I just want to give you a chance. Anything, any final thoughts, Burgos, Nishikawa, June twenty third, Atlanta. Huge fight for you. Um, any any final thoughts? Fireworks from the first buzz to the last bell. I'm coming in there to kill him. He's coming in there to kill me. Backs against the wall, both of us. We're we're both animals put in a corner. We need the finish. We need a big fight. We need. I'm sorry. We need a big win. Um, I can't see if you write this fight out a hundred times how this fight can be boring one time, especially in the specific position that we're in, where we both need these these finishes that are pretty quick. So, referee says go. We're getting right to work right off the bat. Awesome. Shane, thanks so much, man. Good luck. Enjoy the violence. Have a good one, brother. 
Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.